and welcome to the Grassroots Rugby Show. I'm Louise Ransom. Great to have your company alongside me. Sean Maloney, good to see you. Will Davies as well. Great to have you with us. Uh, Will Shoot Shield viewers would know your face and voice very well after the last few seasons uh, working on that competition. Your wife has had a baby. It's kept you pretty busy. Yeah, absolutely right. I'll take that in terms of the uh, familiarity. But uh, yeah, it looked great to be back involved on some level uh, too. But yeah, very, uh, very lucky, happy and healthy. Born the day after the grand final last year. Oh, so what time behaved time himself. We were on uh, red alert throughout that period. So um, I made a joke uh, before the grand final at the uh, Ken Catfall Medal Awards. That yeah. If he was born before the grand final, he was going to have to be named after the team that won the flag. So uh, didn't, and he's imagine not called if you, students. Imagine if your son, no, but, I mean, imagine if it went Rats. the other way, and your son, no, but your son's just named Rat. Yeah, exactly. I mean, have, imagine having Rat Boy yeah. well, running around that, the Davies house. The, the disaster. Woody's was a, uh, a concern as well. Woody's I mean, would have been the drama. Yeah. But I anyway. think Rat would have been worse. Yeah. Yeah. So good to have you here. We're going to be hitting him up for all his knowledge around Shoot Shield two years in. And I note that on our opener, on our bumper behind us, we've got pilot episode titled up. I reckon scrap the pile. I reckon this needs to keep rolling and rolling and rolling over the Shoot Shield. This is the first time ever, Lou, we've been lucky enough to bring together the best of the Shoot Shield in a highlight show. Yeah, this is this is different. This is ex more extensive. This is like we're going on a deep dive on Shoot yeah. Shield. We've got Coles, we've got Subbies, the whole box of ice. What else have you got lined up for us? We've got plenty lined up. But Sean, what's your club rugby story? Tell uh, me for those watching on that don't know. I embarrassed my way around each of Sydney's Shoot Shield clubs quite adequately. <laughs> Had a bit of time in Subbies. That was fun. Played with mighty DY lines and obviously Colts and uh, all the bits and pieces as well. So very happy to be here. Can't wait to get stuck in over the next little bit. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's talk about uh, the match of the round really in Shoot Shield over the weekend. It was between Randwick and the Rats and uh, Randwick are just too good in this game. So much to play out Yeah, a really good win. And uh, two rounds in against Waringa, who've been one of the forces of the past couple of years. Josh Holmes, as you expect with his leadership and experience, uh, just firing early. One of the toughest things to defend a Josh Holmes dummy near the line. So you've got a feel for the Randwick defenders. This time gives the ball a nice try for the Rats. And uh, they're looking pretty good early, Shorty. It was all the Rats in this first half, looking to bounce back after going down in that opening round game against City University. But uh, it was, I mean, it was certainly just the classic game of, I hate using that cliche, mm -hmm. when we're three minutes into our first episode of Grassroots Rugby, but it was a game of two because it swung the other direction in the second. Yeah, he just keeps on getting better and better, Josh Holmes, in terms of his uh, ability to lead that side around. I need him more than ever this year, I think, with a couple of changes. But... Randwick, you've got to like what you saw from them on the weekend and also how they're firming. It's obviously a very proud club. We know a lot of the history with Randwick, but they've got some ripping young players coming through uh, and a lot of persistence from them to uh, get level. And then where the match could have turned, a red card coming for Lockie Miller um, and for mine, a red card every moment of the day. James Quinn right there and he saw it. Uh, ben Woolitz, uh, the Warringa player, I think he made it look a little bit better than it was if that's even a thing you can see him Hang sort of embracing Lockie what Miller. What do you mean making it look better than it was? Look if he didn't hold his body weight and sort of grab onto Miller he could have landed on his neck and obviously past the perpendicular right. could have been a lot worse. I, okay gotcha so he's safety braced on the way Absolutely through. I mean that takes good strength. In the I tell you this Lockie Miller is an outstanding talent the man who's just caught the red card there uh, not a bad bone in that kid's body, so it was bang out a little of... little send-off uh, too from uh, Warringah. It, uh, it was spectacular, a little uh, good, good send-off, yeah. good send-off. So that made it 15-14 for the back end of that game, and you were certain that it was going to be the Rats to come away with it. It's pretty gutsy defence though by Randwick, wasn't it? Yeah, really good defence. They've got some great, uh, great young forwards, uh, and we've seen plenty of them get stuck in here. Christian Boydevin, uh, Nathan Den Hoyt, and... Uh, also, Tom Nolan. We're going with Nolan. It's uh, got to be Nolan. Yep, I believe so. Um, his dad came up and corrected, uh, not corrected me, I don't need correcting, but told us which of the uh, two it was. So if he's now, and I've uh, butchered that one. So if you know the correct pronunciation, please do let us know. But gutsy stuff, as you say, from Randwick and, uh, and able to hold a ring around. How good far side there could you have? We've seen the lower graders and Colts. I mean, that's one of the other features of Shoot Shield this year is we've got that continuity of Colts in and around the grade teams as well. And... 
they rev up. And when they rev up, first grade teams normally respond. We saw that week one up at Rat Park when the uni lower graders and uh, Colts were really tearing in and it really got them up that next level. So uh, massive defence, but they did have a chance late, the Rats through Harley at Waterwheel. Yeah, not ideal for uh, for Rats fans this, but again, Randwick defence, a, uh, a huge piece of contact from uh, Nolan on Harley Atwater and um, just sticking to it. He looked through for all money. Warringah potentially taking the lead, but um, Randwick at home, and, and as you say, you get a, a vocal crowd, ball just dislodged. Nine times maybe out, out of yeah, ten. Yeah, Atwater's eyes light up. Yeah, Harley Atwater is a tremendous player. Nine times out of ten, they're under the arches in that corner of the McDonald's. You know what I'm the talking about? Arcs, the, the golden arcs. The golden arcs. In that little corner. <laughs> and just couldn't hang on, and that ended up being the match uh, defining try saver. Really a uh, well-known name, Christian Poitavin. Poitavin being the well-known name, of course, in, in rugby circles. He uh, played a part late in this one. Yeah, ripping young prospect, and uh, been huge raps on him coming through, not just because of the bloodlines, but also his leadership with Colts a couple of years ago. I think 2018 mm. led them to the Premiership, and uh, been a, a great talisman for a lot of these younger players coming through. So. Randwick fans early on um, will be up and about. Are they calling, are they calling him young Poido? Like Poido, Poido, <laughs> sure. Poido. Yeah. They must be. Yeah. Does he play similar to the old man in terms of his uh, on ball and just aggressive go get him at every turn attitude? Tough young player. Yeah, and, right. uh, there are a few of them as well uh, through that back row for Randwick. So um, you can see what it means to them. Big early win. doors, two rounds in, a, uh, a great win against on the one of the heavyweights for the past couple of years. Mm. Ringer. Yeah, really great uh, victory for Randwick. Let's talk to one of the head coaches, bring him into the show. Good friend of, of the show. Morgan Tuanui. You're our only friend, Morgan Tuanui. How does first, that feel? Welcome, friend. early on. Our first friend. Right. Oh, Jeez. Well, tell, you tell you what, you're scraping, the bar well, you're scraping the barrel if I'm your only friend, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, and I think uh, it's not an auspicious start. It's not an auspicious start. The only thing you got right about that game was Tom Nolan's name. So that's something. Yes. Uh, you've got <laughs> some work to do. <laughs> nice one. Um, tell us about the weekend. A couple of injury updates uh, for us with uh, Horitz and Hutchinson, I believe. Yeah, Dave Horwitz, who was excellent for us in round one against the Hunter, really controlled things for us. He had a head knock, so he'll definitely miss uh, the round three clash out of Parramatta at Lidcombe Oval this week. Henry Hutchison, unfortunately, he's got some somewhat significant damage to a hamstring, so he'll miss at least this week and, and a little bit into the future, I'd say. Hopefully he's a quick healer because he, he's been very good for us playing both on the wing and at 13. And what we have found is having those sevens guys come in. They've just got wonderful core skills. They're still learning their positional stuff in the 15s because they don't play a lot of it. But they can catch and pass and tackle and compete at the ruck. And uh, you can see that he was pretty shattered and he's an important part of our playing group. On those sevens players, Morgan, how have you found the ability to harness a lot of that skill set at training? Have you seen much of a difference in a lot of the other players embracing that attacking flair? And, and then how, on top of that, do you sort of plan for that in in-game in situations, especially given perhaps the experience level isn't there at 15s? Yeah, I think the one thing you see at training and even in these early stages in the first two rounds is that when the game goes unstructured, when it's a bit fractured, counter-attack turnover, they're very much comfortable in that situation. Obviously, they're really elite athletes at the moment, uh, but also they're, you know, they're conditioned to, once line breaks are made or once defences are fractured, to really identify those things and finish it off, which fits really comfortably with the Ramwick ethos the way it always has been. So uh, it's a pretty easy club for them to, to settle into. Uh, and what they've had this first two uh, weeks of the competition is a tight five that's given them an opportunity as well. So it's been quite nice balance. It's only round two. We've had two games at home. But uh, there's some good signs there. We just had that image up there of uh, one of my favourites from the HSBC 7 Series, Maurice Longbottom. Where are you running him? How do you look to utilise a guy who's not massive in stature but just has insane pace off the mark and those skills that you touch on, I mean, they're sublime. Yeah, he's a good second grader, not a bad second grader. <laughs> uh, uh, he, uh, no, he's, he, you know, he, needs, he needs game time. He's played the least amount of 15s of anyone, I'd say, in the shoot shield. So he played 80 minutes at, at half back in, in second grade, then came off the bench. To add those things that everyone knows that he could, anyone who's seen him play and he's seen him play sevens can, you know, when defences get a bit more tired, when the game becomes, you know, fractured and there's some unstructured footy, he comes into his own. Uh, so he's learning the role of a nine. We'll probably use him in the back three as well at times. So at the moment, it's getting a body of work in second grade to get used to playing 15 and to learn the role of nine. And then also know that a really easy place for him to slot in is in the back three, where on counter and kick return and chiming in the back lines and, and possibly attacking blind sides, he can do that pretty easily.
Yeah, loving seeing a few of those guys back playing uh, in the 15-man game. Uh, let's talk about your opponents for next week, the two Blues. Talk me through the sort of approach you'll take into this one, Morgs. But this is a really good mental challenge, I think, for our guys in terms of preparation. I was waiting that long in the green room for you guys to get to me that I've dried out, but it's been a pretty <laughs> wet night here on, on a Monday night at Latham Park. Uh, so we haven't done any on-field training this evening. The boys are in the gym and then uh, they had a video review session. But obviously we'll look, at, we'll look more at Paris as the week goes on. But, you know, we've obviously seen their size up front and then obviously the explosive nature of their back line. Um, we're pretty happy that Tatafu Plotter now is playing fourth grade at the moment. So hopefully he doesn't get promoted. <laughs> don't, don't need to see him come up. Thanks very much. But, um, you, know, you know, we've all been out, whether it's at Granville or Death Valley or, or playing away wherever Parramatta play, we know that, you know, you have to start fast, first 20 minutes, and try and dominate that advantage line. If you let them get momentum, get their sales up, then it's a long afternoon at the office. So uh, another really exciting challenge for our playing group to play some better rugby than last week. They didn't actually play very well in terms of our rugby, but there was courage and there was bravery under some adversity at the end, and we need to leapfrog off that. Okay, Morgan Tuanui, thanks so much for your time here on the Grassroots Rugby Show. Go well on the weekend. Thanks, guys. It's always good to chat to Morgs. Guys, before we move on to some other clubs and games from the weekend, let's stick with Randwick for a little bit. Let's uh, talk about their great day because they won every fixture bar one. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to get swept anywhere. <laughs> and this was another win for Randwick too good for the Rats in twos in second grade. She got spicy, Will Davies. I know you like it getting spicy. Yeah, and absolutely. Always good to set the tone, I think, as well in terms of, oh, we know it's physically distanced at the moment, limited crowd. So um, for the crowd <laughs> in attendance Watch to get Maurice a bit. Watch Longbottom, the round week number nine. I think he gets, he's already involved. He's going to get, you're going to get ripped back somewhere along here. In he goes. The Moz, Moz would struggle to knock <laughs> the foam off a cappuccino from the local cafe. I don't know what he's getting involved in that for, but another big win there for uh, Randwick in two, it's good to see it getting spicy. And then, look, we'll just jump straight into this Colts mm. at the weekend. It was a tough afternoon for Ringer on the Colts front. Randwick, a very good Corey Hooper, the sole try scorer in the red head gear here for Ringer. So, second row gets a chance to go in, does it. That's later in the game. Yeah, previous nice. to that, Will, previous to that, Luke, he gets set up with a chance to take it 40, okay? He's off and he's just thinking, this is going to hit the socials. I'm going viral, but now for all the <laughs> wrong reasons. Oh, oh. Dives for the line, three out, and on the Astro turf, you don't slide so good. Yeah, what's the undulation towards those goblets? <laughs> Looks like he's in Gloucester chasing the wheel of double Gloucester cheese down the hill. But you the just, legs just go. You do not slide on the Astro turf. There is a lesson there for young Corey, but well done on him getting the sole try in that uh, heavy loss in against no, Randwick on the weekend. No rush to get good up there. Good pace for a, for a young lock. And read it well, too. Motoring. Yeah, telegraph the play. Pluck her out. Right. Pluck her out. Anyway, that's your, your Randwick and Wicks. Randwick, Wicks and uh, Rats wrapped. Yeah. Try getting that away. Yeah, yeah, I'll leave that yeah. one to you. Um, okay, let's move on to Gordon and Two Blues. We spoke to Morgs about uh, the Two Blues and they will be hungry after not scoring a single point against Gordon. But Gordon look really good this year, don't they, Will? They do look really good, and, uh, and they've been building. They had a, a decent campaign last year, but as we seem to say every year, very competitive, and, uh, and that top six sort of ends up being a top ten in terms of sides jostling for it. But they've got some great leadership uh, through the forward pack. Mahi Vailanu's in tremendous form. They've got some good outside backs as well. Uh, um, uh, my, Go on. To him, Alilia Fano going well out on a wing. Got but, it. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting with, with Gordon how they manage it. I reckon they've been building nicely. Um, there's Mahi Vailano who spent a bit of time with the Warringah, a bit of time with the Rebels, and under Darren Coleman with Gordon going very nicely. So a massive win against the Two Blues, who obviously everyone hopes can perform at a, uh, a slightly better clip. But um, we get to the latter a bit later, unfortunately, for the teams from out west. They've been on the end of some pretty heavy defeats, but uh, could be a, a pretty fun place to be on a Saturday afternoon uh, and Saturday morning this year, Chatswood Oval. That's if you're a stag fan. Or a just general have you noticed the, Have you noticed a move away from Highlanders to stags this year? They want to be known as the stags more than the Highlanders. The stags. stag man or a Highlander man? Don't mind. I like stags. I'm a stag. Stags good, sure. yeah. Yeah, I'll go with it. But some good pickups there for uh, Darren Coleman. Harrison Goddard's in there alongside yep. his brother. They're going along nicely. Uh, Brandon Quinn 
mm -hmm. he can shift gears on the wing as well and one of many of those sevens players going back into shoot shield which is great for all of us it is uh let's move to Willara oval i was sidelined for this one on seven two as east's 36 over west's 10. east will always going to be winning this one. Started out really terribly for West Harbour. Rod Davies got concussed in, in just the first few minutes. Yeah, not great to see. And uh, another feature of the competition, we talk about the sevens players uh, in tough circumstances, tough times. Uh, there's a silver lining for the, the Shoot Shield and Club Rugby seeing these international stars, a former Wallaby as well, Rod Davies. But mm -hmm. um, East will be an interesting one this year for sure. They've potentially missed that depth in the front row the past couple of years. I know it's been something they've been focusing on. They've got some depth in that front row all of a sudden. So they've got some size, some good young players coming through and uh, and some weapons in the back row as well. Sam Shire's nicely settled and uh, uh, Jack Digby as well and, uh, and, and looking pretty solid. East, not the best performance, but uh, a heavy win nonetheless. Yeah, that's it. They needed it after n n getting the loss or yes. not getting the win in the mm -hmm. first getting, round. They were really needed up. to get that. Good afternoon there. Oh, I mean, the match of the, it was the TV match yeah. of the round. Good afternoon, Wallara. Great afternoon. It's a lovely oval. It's very nice. How to is be the at. grass looking? Grass was looking good as always. I don't <laughs> yeah, think it never looked good. Back good. Back good. There, but it's nice not, surface. not quite real. But yeah, West were actually hoping for a, a bit of a wet track there, but the rain never really showed up. It showed up about 15 minutes uh, to go before full time. So wasn't the game plan, I think, that they initially wanted to, um, to sort of get to. But let's move on now. Let's go to another result, Norths and Penrith. 53 points to three. Norths absolutely destroying the Emus here. Emus, first game of the year, first game in quite a while, Sean. You know what? Take your time, Emus. Take your time and wait till you hit round seven or eight. Maybe you've kept that continuity of squad. You're John Muggledon. You're out at Emu Park and you start looking to grab some scalps. So I reckon it's, a, it's an easy transition back into it. Take, it, take your time. Yeah, it's nice on, uh, on paper, certainly. But if when you're on the back of these heavy losses, it, um, it's, it's not going to be much fun fronting up in the, uh, the cold and the wet at training. Nor so one of the, the heavyweights of the comp in the past little while, certainly. Um, some question marks over North coming in potentially. They've lost a couple of players, but at the same time, they are uh, going very nicely to start the campaign. A pretty softish draw for Northern Suburbs to start the first sort of four or five weeks. They've got a buy coming up as well, but uh, you can't do much other than what they're doing in terms of the heavy wins and, uh, and tries from all over the park too. Still star started Northern Suburbs. Yeah, so the coach, uh, Zach B, just last week in the, in the Asian Isle at uh, Woolworths. We've had a bit of catch up, <laughs> out on the beaches. <laughs> and uh, yeah, spoke about all things Norths and he's mm. loving being in charge. He's a really up and out of the group. It's great yeah. stuff. Okay, let's uh, move on to Sydney Uni and Manly. This one was a gritty, gritty game, gritty win in the end by uni, 10 points to six. Can keep this punchy. It was the lowest scoring shoot shield game I can remember maybe going back the last 10 years, at least. I can't remember uh, lowest scoring game. The headline from that matchup, Henry Clooney's Ross in his 50th game in the blue and gold hoops with the only try of the match, 10-6. Tell us about the backstory. I, I was shocked by this. Yeah, look, one of the good guys of uh, the Shoot Shield and Sydney Club Rugby and Sydney Sport as well. Uh, great to see him back this season, but also last year. Uh, early on at Sydney Uni, sliced his leg open uh, mm -hmm. with a try-saving tackle, uh, caught the corner post and uh, got pretty serious for him uh, after that in hospital. They uh, weren't sure if he was going to make it, in fact, and, and that's not overselling it. Then it was a case of whether he might lose the leg, but... Um, was back playing by the end of the season, had great success with Sydney Uni. So wonderful to see him performing so consistently for Sydney Uni and, uh, and just running around uh, doing what he does. Uni coach Michael Hodge is just sitting back going, how is this? Yes. Yeah. First grade, first That's year, cool. 31 yeah, no years kidding. of age, two games, two wins, no problem. Mm. Yeah, they lose a couple of players this year, obviously uh, a few go over to Leicester but um, mm. with Robert Taylor, the head yep. coach, but again, how strong do they look? Yep. Yeah, really strong. Uh, Eastwood looked pretty strong too against the team from the Hunter, the Wildfires, 46 points to 11 this one. Big win, Eastwood, just saying, hey, we're here, don't forget yeah, about us. Kidding. We're going to be in contention later in the year as well. Yeah, strong lineup too, Ben Batcher really settled yeah, in now. Yeah, they're yeah. not short, they're yeah. not short at all. <laughs> Shall we take a look at the ladders team? Let's do it. Let's do it, let's get into the ladder through two rounds. Uh, and it looks a little something like this. We've got four teams who are at the moment uh, unbeaten, untroubled, and they ran out that top four. And then you've got Manly and East clipping out the Top six, Norse and Gordon, just separated by points differential. Through to the uh, bottom seven, the chasing pack, and Southos, they bagged maximum points in that first up win. 
And then you can see the remainder there running all the way to the bottom. And don't forget, we've got those two new teams returning. Mm. Well, two, they're not new teams, they're two teams returning in the form of the Emus and the Wildfires. Okay, so that's how it's looking at the moment. Let's see what we can look forward to over the weekend and check out the fixtures. Good one to start there, Warringah and East should be interesting. Also, the uh, TV match of the round, Manly and North, so that will be on 7-2. Make sure you catch it then. Sean Maloney and myself will be there uh, watching on and calling that game. Two Blues and Randwick, Penrith and Southern Districts as well. The Wildfires up against Sydney Uni. That'll be a tough outing, but they'll be better for it, you'd say. Uh, Eastwood and West Harbour, that one's quite an interesting match as well. So there is plenty to look forward to. You can see all the highlights uh, after full time on Clutch as well, so make sure you check those out can stream uh, second grade and cults and subbies and plenty of other things. Oh, it's a feast, it's a smorgasbord this year. I don't like to say it, but there's almost too much. Oh, don't say Clutch it. TV don't have you it. everywhere. Don't say it. You could just sit there the whole weekend <laughs> watching back to 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 back games. Yep. So good. You know what we're going to do now, Sean? What are we doing? We're going to go around the grounds. Yes, we are. So this is our lighthearted sort of recap of what's played out across the suburban and cults and grade grounds around Sydney across the weekend. And we'll kick it off. At Chatswood Oval, let's spin it back to Chatswood and, well, how about this one? Will Davies, the inside skip ball finding Pavlakis. Yeah, big Mike Pavlakis. Uh, you love to see it, don't you? Certainly something they've no doubt tried and practiced at training and then a lovely line from Pavlakis. Uh, There's so much going on. Had, going had on a bit of work here. on the back of the jersey as well. He's wearing the double zeros. <laughs> in he comes, a lovely pass as well. And, and a bit of work to do. Yeah. A dummy to no one. Back oh. inside under the post. Lovely oh, we stuff. We love Michael that. Lovely. We love that. So good. Okay, what is happening in Colt, Sean? Take me there. Four tries. We had a four try effort from North winger Liam Dalibozek at the weekend up against... Penrith and no other player in the competition scored four tries on the weekend. So we highlight him. He's out of the Hunter. He's on his way up through New South Wales, Gen Blue and the like. And well, some of them are pretty easy put downs. We've got to catch him and, and still get him across the strike. Got to be in the position. Lovely positioning from yeah. the young man out on his wing, just minding his own business, supporting, I'm sure, vocally too. Four tries. It's a uh, good day at the office. There well is again. Well done, right Liam. Right on the end of it. Yeah, well done, Liam. Great day out. Uh, subbies in the Kentwell Cup. <laughs> Tell me about this one. Great. Well, when I say when I say knocks old boys up against colleagues, you know it's going to be a, a feisty <laughs> to the wire mm. encounter, and that's just what we got. Colleagues leading 10-3. Knocks go in, make it 10-8. We're looking at David standing with a sweet shot on what appears to be some kind of a dusty road. Where's the grass going on at that field? What's happening, Will? In the middle of winter, there's not a speck of grass, but now a chance for Steno after full time to potentially whip through the match winning penalty. You guys got him in or out? These Same are the sorts spot. of things you wake up dreaming about on a Saturday morning. Big game, they? big crowd on hand for colleagues. But shh, nah, oh. hook, <laughs> snap hook off the tee. It oh, stays 10-10 full time between the heavyweights in Subby's colleagues and Ox. Dea, yeah, that wasn't overly close. No, was it's it? over the top to say it's, it's almost a better story for him, but it's a bloody good story <laughs> when you've got the vision to prove it. Okay. Uh, That's okay. What a, uh, there is a special guest coming up in this one, there or is. a VIP. Someone We're going straight roaming. back to Chatswood Oval. Look at these two blues flying along up by 41 Chatswood Oval Saturday night, and the lights go out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty hard when, there's, so uh, good. when there are no lights. I reckon the Gordon assistant coach has just wandered over to the power box and gone <laughs> yoink. <laughs> so we've done enough. 41-0. The man running touch in that game, Will Davies, you know who it is. Tatafu pulled an hour. Well, Great to yeah, see. Yeah. I mean, this is what it's all about, isn't it? He's back with the two blues, plays fourth grade, sticks around right until the death, uh, carries the flag uh, on the touch He's line. He's a too. legend. Yeah, he that's what you want. fourth grade. That's a big day. At Chatswood Oval, I mean, he, I like to think that he had a chance to get over and sample some of the delights around Chatswood around lunchtime. Imagine that turning up Saturday morning. It's a big maybe day. a decent Friday afternoon. And yeah, then there you are. It's a big day. Packing down against Tatarf. Yeah, so, Tarf's a legend. This lady here is a legend as well. Emily Robinson, also known as Horse, our mate Sean. She's going great guns. Is that, what about that? She's back after two hundred days out with a neck injury. We know that she can pass. She's at the tri sister now. What, Bang, whips through the additional two as well. Kicks goals for Ringer, kicks goals for the Wallaroos, the Australian women's team as well. And the Jacks got back up and running as well, which is awesome. And they're, 
and it says it all is on my neck. Yeah. Where was that sort of uh, goal kicking in subbies, hey? Yeah, Take true. note. You know what? Watch and learn. They, you know, Knox need less steno and more horse. Yeah, and they would have won that game, 13-10. Less steno, yeah. more horse. Easy from here, though, isn't it? It's easy. easy. <laughs> so easy. Uh, congratulations to Emily Robinson for making that comeback. Uh, guys. Just wow, that's, that was quick. Yes, that's, that's rocketed through. Yep. Our very first episode of the Grassroots Rugby Boom. Show. Sean Maloney, pleasure as always to have your company. This weekend, let's just go through this weekend where we're going to be at. We're going to be at Manly Oval. We'll be hanging out again. I hang out way too much with you at the moment. The mayor will look after everyone <laughs> down at Manly Oval when we get there. There'll be some social distancing, mayor issues and activities being played out. Mm. Manly v North, so that's going to yeah. be a cracker. Yeah, going to be glued to Clutch TV, of course. Yeah. We saw yeah. plenty of good chats coming through. Uh, on a How few of the games last week. I like the comments. The subbies was good. People yeah. flying in from all over the world, getting stuck into each other. Clutch TV, um, baby. Do it responsibly, of course. Yeah. So, uh, don't yeah. want to go too heavy. No. Clutch TV. Will Davies, pleasure to have you on Thank board you. as well. Thanks for your company. Great to have you watching wherever you are watching. Thanks to Clutch TV for bringing us our very first episode of the Grassroots Rugby Show.